The siege of Mariupol was a look into hell. <laughs> For nearly three months, the city held out against a ferocious assault. But Mariupol's story did not end with its fall. Russia is turning it into rubble again, this time in the name of reconstruction. But the Ukrainians who call it home understand a different reason for the mass demolition, an attempt to cover up war crimes and to erase Ukrainian identity. I think that now it's going to массовое уничтожение всего, не только украинской культуры, а в целом культуры Мариуполя, потому что... Bulldozed and transformed into a blank canvas for plans like these, drawn up in Moscow to turn it into a model Russian city, to be held for decades to come. What's happening in Mariupol is the blueprint for a Ukraine under permanent Russian occupation. Our story begins thousands of miles away from the front line, here in northern Spain. Karina Gurnak had just finished law school in Mariupol. Russian снаряд прилетает прямо под окна, а мы были на первом этаже, и он разрывается и пробивает меня насквозь одну ногу и застревает во второй ноге. Wounded, she fled for Dnipro, where Ukrainian doctors tended to her leg, and from there to northern Spain. She was forced to leave her city and her family behind. Her father was shot dead by a sniper. This is the last picture they took together. Her brother was taken to Russia in an evacuation bus. Her mother and grandmother are still in Mariupol. We've blurred their faces for their protection. Соседи помогали моей бабушке готовить еду, а мама тоже как бы как-то перебивались, переживали, вот как бы. Можно сказать, что самое страшное, самый страшный удар взяла на себя я, так что слава богу. Karina was forced to flee, along with many other former residents of Mariupol. Now, thousands of miles away here in northern Spain, she's forced to watch on as Russia remodels her city. More than two and a half thousand buildings sustained damage in the fighting. Nearly half of everything that stood in the city. The Conflict Observatory, a US NGO, has used artificial intelligence to map the extent of the destruction. A city that flourished over 300 years, practically demolished in a matter of weeks. And they've been busy, not repairing buildings, but demolishing them to create a new city. Russia strictly controls access to the city, but we've been following a trail of clues, collecting social media posts and satellite imagery to build up a picture of what's going on. We verified more than 100 demolitions or notices of demolition. This represents the most conservative estimate for the scale of transformation. Each building was once someone's home or business. The most famous was the old drama theatre in the centre of the city. In early March, Ukrainian civilians were sheltering there. They wrote the word for children in huge letters on the road outside so that it would be visible from the sky. The airstrike hit in the middle of the morning. Hundreds of people are thought to have been killed. For months, it stood as a crumpled shell. But pro-Russian journalists have advertised the local regime's plans to rebuild it. A facade has been put up around it, decorated with giant portraits of Russian cultural icons, like the writer Pushkin. Ukrainians see a different motive. Alevtina Shvetsova, like Karina, barely escaped with her life. She lived on 75B Mirror Avenue, which translates to Peace Avenue. It has since been renamed in honour of Lenin. This satellite image, taken just a few days after the attack on the theatre, shows the impact. Alevtina and her family were about to have dinner and went upstairs to collect some plates, when an artillery strike wiped out the floor below. Now, her home, in the historic centre, has been torn down. До яких ми мріяли повернутися після деокупації, просто торкнутися стін, ти розумієш, що там все згоріло. 
але ця можливість повернутися та побачити це на власні очі, на жаль, рашисти забирають в нас цю можливість і просто трощать і знищують місто до непізнаваності. This is the man nominally in charge of Mariupol. Denis Pushilin styles himself as the head of the People's Republic of Donetsk, the region that had been under separatist Russian-backed control since 2018, until Vladimir Putin declared its annexation last year. This is a decree signed back in July. It's just a sheet of A4, but it represents a sharp change in a country's heritage and culture. Behind it are multiple documents, hundreds of pages long, produced by the Russian government. On the second page, it lays bare its intention to hold the city under Russian control for the next two decades and grow the population they either killed, maimed or drove away. They work out it'll take 13 years to get back to pre-war numbers. Flick through the document a few pages and page 14 shows the plans for the old town. We've taken satellite imagery and aligned it with the plans. The traditional patchwork of small houses that gave the centre its character are ruins and they'll be replaced by monolithic apartment blocks. We showed all this to Karina. I think that now there is a mass destruction of the whole not only of Ukrainian culture, but also of the culture of Mariupol, because they uh, have already taken the moral, the uh, monuments, absolutely everything that is related to the culture of Mariupol, everything that is related to the Ukrainian culture, has already been completely destroyed all the Ukrainian literature. It is a pattern being repeated across Mariupol. Some of the most visible signs of Ukrainian identity were the first to be erased, even as people still had no proper shelter. Just a few hundred meters up the road from Aleftina was a famous mural of a little girl. She lost her leg and her mother was killed after an indiscriminate rocket attack on the city in 2015, launched by rebel and Russian forces, according to the Ukrainian authorities. The monument was a symbol of resilience, of hope, to those living in her shadow. But in autumn, it began to be painted over. Now, there is no trace. Russian colours have taken her place. It's a similar picture just up the road. We came across this video from a Spanish-Russian influencer. Es que los medios occidentales siempre, siempre, repito, cuentan solo una parte. Mariupol sufrió por los combates, pero es... She's been filming in the region over the last few months, part of a propaganda effort to show the benefits of Russian rule. If we pause this video posted to Twitter, we can see the city's sign behind her. Before, it was yellow and blue, the colours of Ukraine. This isn't just a question of history, of culture, of identity, as important as all those things are. This could be a serious breach of international law. Really, this does not... Um is not in sync with the standards of international human rights law regarding uh, cultural rights. Back in the UK, I showed all this to Professor Alexandra Zanthaki, the UN Special Rapporteur on Cultural Rights. I think what is important is that culture is not used um, as a form of um, um, uh, propaganda and, and that in the post-conflict era, uh, cultural heritage is maintained and revived. Um, otherwise, uh, we can't talk about um, um, cleansing, an idea of cultural cleansing and an idea of cultural um, warfare. This is the image the local regime wants to put out, new housing estates, happy residents and Russian flags everywhere. People are filmed moving in. But even these gleaming new buildings, symbols of Russia's generosity and care, leave a lot to be desired. And people's homes are being demolished at a much faster rate than they're being built, according to our mapping. In some locations, the scale is breathtaking. Every block in this neighborhood in the east of the city has been demolished. 45 buildings in total. Or here in the southwest, entire regions demolished. New high-rises thrown up in the middle of what once was a tranquil park. 
Other new buildings are not for civilian shelter. This, a brand new military base. And in the meantime, those still in Mariupol struggle to survive. For all the Russian boasts of restoration, many still live in bombed out buildings, without water, without heat or electricity in the freezing winter. And more immediately than the reconstruction, they're subject to other methods of control. In so-called filtration camps like this, residents are questioned by authorities, a method of identifying those who might pose a threat to the Russian-backed regime. Schools are being reconstituted, with teachers sent for training in Russia and Ukrainian textbooks swapped for Russian ones. Children have been encouraged to join military training. У меня есть двоюродный брат, который тоже в Мариуполе. Он сейчас ходит в русскую школу, и он говорит нам нас учат все по новой, нас учат всему русскому, гимн России, полностью все учебники на русском. То есть, к сожалению, уже вот этот этап уничтожения украинской культуры и, в принципе, культуры Мариуполя уже, к сожалению, прошел. We asked different ministries in Russia and the Donetsk People's Republic for comment, but received no reply. Что Мариуполь это тот город, который будет отвоевывать в последнюю очередь, так как его как бы взяли первым и отвоевывать будет последним. Поэтому. Karina is a long way from home, but she is at least safe. Her leg is healed, thanks to the Ukrainian doctors who helped her when she fled. But all she can do is wait. Who can say for how long? Tom Cheshire, Sky News, Leon, Northern Spain.